We have come up with some pretty spectacular things, like the automobile and computers, but science has also been used in ways that we don't always think about. Take, for example, the things that you're going to find on this list. We humans frequently take it upon ourselves to experiment and mess with nature, to change things from the way they were meant to be. This is kind of a freaky example of that. This is animals invented by human beings. Human pig. Okay, okay, no real human pigs were running around, or even pig humans for that matter. At least we know that. What we do know, though, is that once upon a time, scientists injected an early stage pig embryo with the stem cells of a human. Then they implanted it inside of a female pig and let it develop for 28 days, which was long enough to be able to study how the human and pig cells interacted, but didn't take it any farther or go any longer because they didn't want to cause any ethical issues for anyone. The result of letting something like that being born are totally unpredictable and a number of things could have happened. One guess was that they might have a pig baby born with a human-like brain and human-like thoughts, which if you think about it would be absolutely horrible. Imagine having a human mind and being able to think like us, but being stuck in a tiny pig body. Luckily, they didn't let the experiment go that far and stopped it before we had to find out. Diesel excretion. Did you happen to know that there are bugs out there that ingest waste products? turn those over in their little bodies for a while, then excrete diesel fuel, like almost entirely ready to go, right into the tank of a car diesel fuel. LS9 is a company out of Silicon Valley that's focusing on the fuel problems we have today. They're trying to find the next sustainable product, and they just might have it. That's where these little fuel bugs come in. They actually begin their lives as non-pathogenic strains of E, coli, or industrial yeast. Then they are modified by LS9. Like, these guys alter their DNA to become these diesel-producing superbugs. The company is working on figuring out how to mass produce these bugs for diesel production on a global scale. But for now, they're sort of stuck in the laboratory on this one. Still really cool though. Ruppy. Ruppy is a puppy, and Ruppy was created by us human beings. Back in 2009, South Korean scientists cloned the beagle using a viral transfection of fibroblast cells with a protein that allows this dog to, wait for it, glow red on its own. The embryos created were then inserted into a surrogate mama puppy and allowed to grow. It was born into this world and now holds the impressive but totally strange ability to glow, which is a first for puppies and for science. Where in the world is science going, and why do we need a glowing puppy? Glowfish. These genetically modified, genetically engineered fish are fluorescent and fun and publicly available for all to have. But it wasn't always like that. No, once upon a time we didn't have fluorescent fish that we could just take home as pets and marvel at for hours. In 1999, back at the National University of Singapore, Dr. Zihan Gong was playing around with a gene that helps to encode the green fluorescent protein when they decided to try inserting it into the embryo of a zebrafish. The whole goal of the experiment was to try and come up with a fish that could selectively glow in the presence of environmental toxins and help to detect pollution. They successfully created a fluorescent fish and then went on to inject them with various genes that caused the fish to glow different colors. Yorktown Technologies LP obtained the rights to take the fish public and rename them Glowfish to appeal to a worldwide market. They were really successful and the Glowfish have become a household thing. And Yorktown Technologies recently sold the Glowfish brand to Spectrum Brands Incorporated in 2017 for $50 million. Featherless Chickens well, 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 somebody designed a chicken that comes without feathers, and it's basically all just for food, right? Makes sense, we guess. These chickens were created by an Israeli geneticist who says that they will be lower in calories, more environmentally friendly, they'd grow faster, and are more likely to survive under various weather conditions. Oh, and they also don't have feathers, so the whole defeathering part of the chicken eating process will be cut out as well. The geneticist created the new chicken by crossing a regular old boiled chicken with a breed that has a naturally bare neck. Now we've got naked chickens running around, and who knows, they're probably cold, and studies show that chickens without feathers do tend to suffer more than regular chickens because they're more open to sunburn and bug and parasite bites. The males are also unable to mate because they can't flap their wings. These poor chickens. They're pretty weird looking, but they're also kind of cute. Still not worth it for them. Flowerhorn cichlid. We know that we already discussed some colorful human-made fish, but what about the colorful human-made fish that also has some incredibly distinct facial and head features? 
Well, the flower horn cichlid is precisely that, and they're quite popular because of those crazy protrudences on their head. They're very popular in many Asian countries and were first developed in Taiwan, Thailand, and Malaysia. And the only reason that they exist in the wild at all is because some were released to live freely in the great big world. They have a lifespan that typically ranges between 10 and 12 years, and today there are many different breeds and variations of this fish seen throughout the world, living in and out of captivity. Sadly, as with most science-tweaked animals, these fish experience health issues that seem to have been born out of their genetic modifications, and they're being kept in aquariums. Hole and head disease and digestive block are all very common with this flower horn cichlid. And although these aren't usually fatal, they do impede on a wholly comfortable and enjoyable way of life. Can you imagine being made to go through life with a massive tumor on your head because somebody thought it made you look cute? Dolly. Perhaps the most famous human-created animal around is a sheep named Dolly. Now you're probably asking yourself where or why you've heard of this beautiful girl, right? Well, back in 1996, Dolly came into this world, and her even making it here was pretty much a miracle in and of itself. Why? Because she was the first mammal ever to be cloned. And that, my friend, is a pretty big deal. She was announced to the world at large in 1997, and her story immediately caught on and gained a whole bunch of attention. Want to hear something interesting? Dolly has three different mothers. Yes, you heard that right. The first provided the egg from which Dolly was grown. The second provided the DNA to make her. The third is the mother that finally carried her to term. Dolly was created using a process called somatic cell nuclear transfer and lived nearly seven years before needing to be put down due to her severe arthritis and progressive lung disease. She did have children though. She had six lambs in total who carry on her legacy. Dolly was a first, but she's most definitely not going to be the last. We wonder how long it will be before they start cloning full-fledged humans. Probably sooner than we think think. Spider Silk Goat Now this may sound like a scary thing, and in all actuality, it kind of is. Well, it's more creepy than anything, and that's just because these goats aren't just normal goats. They're actually part spider as well. They have some spider DNA inside of them, but that doesn't stop them from looking like a regular old goat on the outside. They also look like regular old goats on the inside, but there's one key difference, one spidery quality that these goats have that others don't. Their milk is very, very rich in spider silk protein, and it can be spun and separated to collect large amounts of spider silk, much more than can be obtained from your average spider. Spider silk can be used for all kinds of things considering it has one of the highest tensile strengths of all things we know of today, and is used in making certain bulletproof armors and other goods that require extreme durability and an incredible lightness. Isn't it crazy that we can combine DNAs of different animals just to accentuate qualities we like? We're literally creating designer animals these days. Vacanti Mouse Way back in the day, like back in the early to mid-1990s, we, and we mean scientists, thought it was a good idea to try and grow human tissue and various human appendages on mice. We even did it, too. You may recall seeing a picture of the mouse with what looks like a human ear growing out of its back. No, that wasn't a dream, that was real life, and that mouse is what's known as the ear mouse, or Vacanti mouse, after the doctor who created it, Charles A. Vacanti. When the photo hit the internet, it mostly circulated as just a picture with no supporting text or explanation. So many speculated on the authenticity of the thing, and there were many believed it to be fake, but it is very real, and the picture even drew a lot of criticism, even sparking protests against genetic engineering, although that's not what took place with the mouse at all. This is just another example of humans messing with nature and other animal species for research. Crazy cloning lizards. Whoa, okay, so did you know that scientists created a lizard that reproduces not through the usual means of male and female? And you get the picture, but through what's come to be seen as cloning. The scientists successfully mated two different species of North American whiptails that are both found in New Mexico, and the babies were all females. Sounds like a short-lived experiment with no males involved, thus no way to get babies, right? Well, that's where things get interesting. The females ended up laying eggs that, surprisingly, and against almost everything we thought we knew about reproduction, don't need to be fertilized. Not only did the six eggs from the first initial pairing hatch and result in six females, those females laid the eggs that didn't need fertilization, and those hatched, and then those babies even had unfertilized egg babies. As of 2011, the species was in the fourth generation, all not needing males to reproduce and going strong. This all stemmed from scientists pairing two different lizard species and forcing them to mate. Now, would you want to be experimented on and altered the way these animals have been by none other than us, humans? Did you even know that we were taking science in this direction and changing these animals in the ways that we have? Tell us your thoughts down below in the comments. Also, don't forget to click the like button and to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss out on any of our excellent daily content.